Hello and welcome to the Tinker Cards video gallery. Today I'm not going to make a card, I'm going to make a door sign. And um, what I've done is I've got a thick piece of cardboard to cut to the size that I want to. I'm going to put that to one side for the moment, we'll come back to that later. And then I've got two pieces of white card matching it. So I'm just going to, in this video I'm going to show you how to do the front. And it's going to be a door sign for my husband, so, and it will be saying Nix HQ. So what I've done here is I've roughly laid the letters out on the same size piece of card, so that I will see how much space they are going to take up when I come and to stick them down. So that will help me to um, see where to put elements in the background that I would like to uh, be seen a bit more. And here we're going to start now. So I've got several bits. Um, I'm not quite sure what exactly I'll be using. So we just go and start off with colouring the um, the background cards. I'm using Stampin' Up! River Rock. And I've just used one of my dried baby wipes for that. Um, and just see, give it a little bit of a of an initial light green colour. If you're using Distress Inks, I think it's the um, old paper that looks a bit similar. So this will take a little while. So the I and whilst I'm doing that, I'm just going to try and talk you through why. The idea with this is I've got a door sign for work and it's actually up right now saying do not disturb, which I do. Uh, which I put up when I record videos or when I see clients. And um, I feel now Nick's got his office after the move. He's got an office back, a separate room. So he might want to have one too. He doesn't know about this yet. So I thought that should be like a, more like a little surprise for him. So I hope he'll like it once it's finished. So, and this is also the uh, first tutorial I'm doing for the um, Stamplerations Mixed Media Design team. So I'll be working with quite a few stencils, which I'm looking forward to. And whilst I was digging my mixed media supplies out, which have been woefully underused, I discovered that my grunge paste had set rock solid. So I had to raid my husband's DIY kit and I got some filler so we just see how that will work on this here um, it will all be very very interesting so it's probably I don't mind the background getting a little bit dabbled because uh, or whatever the word is I'm looking for anyway it, it being a bit uneven in colour because I'm going to do some bits to it anyway. So just don't want it to be entirely white. And um, I quite like this sort of like pale green because it's going to be a bit of a nature scene and that should be um, giving it quite a nice light base. So if you, I always feel if I go for a very dark base to start with it will um, it will just become too dark in the end and or you have to use quite a lot of white paint or something to lighten it up because anything you do to it will have to be almost like black or thereabouts so um, that's the idea here so and let's just almost like get started a bit. This actually looks a lot more evenly coloured in real than it looks on the screen. On the screen with the light you seem to be seeing these bits more white. They're actually quite nicely light green. Um, but I got, a, I got a daylight lamp. It's just, it, it comes through. It's a bit like when you take photographs of something that's a bit more subtly coloured and then you sort of always end up not quite getting the true colours. So I'm quite happy with the way this looks at the moment. 
and I'm going to get the weathered wood stencil which I absolutely love it gives such a really nice wood effect so all I want to do is have a little bit coming in from into the one into on to one side of it more as like a, a blending in in a way so I am a, a little bit lazy at times and I shouldn't be because this is going to come back to haunt me now we see I should have used my brushes um let's just see what it whether it works like this with the baby wipe let's keep them down I used my shaving brushes the other day when I did the mirror and it, it did seem to, it worked quite well with just using the brushes but of course they are lighter than blending in with a, a dried baby wipe or um, cut and dry foam or something like that so you need to be a little bit careful maybe I'm going to dab it a little bit more just let's see what it does I don't want it to be very um, very dominant as a pattern really it's more a, a gentle thing because I'm going to do some stamping over it and um, just generally add more to the background it's more like a bit of a filler let's have a look what's happened here so yeah you can see a little bit Looks a bit more like zebra rather than wood. So I'll just add a little bit more. Maybe that's that's the green colour. It's also the baby wipe isn't quite as fine. So there's a little bit there. That's all. That will be absolutely sufficient. I'm going to put that to one side now. And if I'm going to go over this with the same colour of course it will pick up even more ink and will highlight that little bit of a pattern more as you can see here so just want it to blend in a little bit get this a little bit darker Right, now let's get some stamps out on this side here. I'll be working again with a stencil and I'm going to use some um, acrylic paints with that. So that can wait until later. Um, let's add some text. And for that, I'm using the mixed media element set. It's got like a really nice text stamp in there last used with red or pink ink hence it's pink right and i'm just going to with this stamp if you make sure that you've got tps uh, the at uh, the right way up and you can always see this with the lines here when they're up then that's the the right way around so i'm just going to use my fingers for this i'm not going to use um any acrylic block because I want it to be uneven and not quite um, yeah not not too visible and too uh, crisp really that was the word I was looking for so let's pop that somewhere here so as you can see it's sort of like a bit a bit there but not too much so that's the idea so let's just work on a little bit and I'm going to line this up here now right And I'm going to line it up here as well, um, just quickly. 
you can see there are bits missing and that's actually quite nice for like a little bit of a background I think. Um, let's go here. And here. Just line it up again a bit to go in there for a little bit. So that's that. I'm just going to hold it a bit closer to the camera for you to see. So I've got a bit of script cross. And um, so next I'm going to get a darker green in. Let's put the river rock to one side and I'll get the always artichoke in. And I'm getting some stamps for the edges. Let's just see. No, let's not stamp just yet. Let's get the other um, let's get the other stencils in. So I want to use the some bird stencil because I thought it would go quite well. Oh, where is it? With doing a couple of birds get one here with a little bit of artichoke ink just very lightly and as you can see it all it picks the wooden texture up quite well as well so I'm just going to go in a little bit And if you, the good thing about um, working with baby wipes is, oops, I better pop that up a bit higher in this on the screen. Uh, there we go. If uh, that's moved my stencil now, never mind. That's about okay. You got those little um, biddies on. Let's call them biddies at the moment. Can't think of the word. And if you dab with them, they add like just quite nice little texture. To your image. Right, so I think that's about right. So as you can see it's not particularly smooth which I didn't want to, just wanted to add that little bit of texture which is quite nice. So it adds a bit more interest. So let's pop that stencil to one side and now next I got the um, matching stamp set which is called uh, Trendy Birds 2. So I'm going to just use that more solid bird and I'm going to stamp it. right over it so that should hopefully give me a slightly darker image of a bird that's the idea we'll have to see if it works let's get my block out I'm going to put my stamping mat underneath there we go so this is probably going to be a slightly more lengthy video but I'm hoping that it would still be within the half hours. I better get my um, my scooter on. Yeah, sorry, that's me rumbling on. I better get cracking here and try and work a bit more quickly. So I've got the idea, but let's see if it works. So if I stamp that right across, it should. Oh, 
there you go. So you've got two birds sitting there. That's what I wanted. Great. I like it when something starts working out. So next I'm going to get the stencil in for the leaves. Let's pop that, close that ink pad up. I might, put, might come back to it again. So now I've got the large leaf flourishes and I'm just going to add some acrylic paint through it. And then we do other bits whilst the paint is trying, hopefully. So let's just see. So I'm just going to do a few bits and maybe a couple coming down here. So I'm just, just going to do this quickly with a brush. Some shimmery acrylic paint which I rather like. Oops, that's the brush getting a little bit uh, frazzled. Going to go over these again in a minute with a lighter green. So, hoping to get a couple of tones there. Just do this quickly. Just get these here in. That's just a little bit more. And just in case you wonder, I got my um, washing up bowl on the floor right next to here using uh, for my stencils to go straight in once they've been used so because I don't like cleaning them afterwards I think that's really quite tricky if you try and do that I always put them in a bowl of water first unless I just use ink on them they, they, then they can be easily wiped right so I've got more like a turquoisey um, green this is starlight paints so I've got green and then I've got one that is called mint so I've never used that before just um, see how it works really that's part of the fun isn't it so let's just see I'm just going to pop a little bit there I'm just going to put them in these more round bits to just see what what it does really. Just a tiny bit more. I didn't want to use any sort of pink or whatever because it's more like a masculine type of project so I thought that this might do quite well for shading and stuff. So let's see the big reveal. Close this off and lift this oops here we go if I could get that stencil off now that's that so that goes in the bowl of water immediately let's let's see uh, it needs to be soaked right and then I get a baby wipe and I'm going to just wipe the acrylic paint off the of my craft mat and I'm going to put that to one side to dry
and once dry I can blend the edges I can add to it because acrylic paint does uh, work a little bit like um, a resist so it can go oh, if you go over it with dye inks uh, it won't really take the color on that much so that's quite good so let's just clean this off here and while it's my um, piece for the door is drying I'm just going to show you another little trick as to what you can do with um, how you can etch your door signs so where's my piece gone right now sometimes I, I tend to I try and use acrylic paints which I probably could have done actually with the dark green here now now that's an idea but as I was thinking because of speed that I might just use some um, pigment ink now pigment ink covers it quite well too sorry I just need to reach across here because I haven't got it in my uh, sort of um, I haven't I have it within reach but my desk here that where I'm doing the crafting on is quite small so I can't put everything on so I've got some pigment inks which I've had for quite a while and a couple of greens and I'm not even I don't even know how good they still are but for things like this they're okay so it's a color box one and it's called silk green so that will do and all you do is you just go over the edges and it really covers the gray from your card quite well and then all it does it needs to dry and it's ready for you to put um, your pieces on really so that's what I tend to use these older inks for so do it on one side and then of course turn over and do it on the other side and it it should still despite this being slightly shiny it, it will still um, cover it and you don't need to go that far in and as you can see the sort of the edge there the grey doesn't come through and it was quite a thick piece of um, cardboard that I got here so that's that yeah those shimmer paints do quite do dry relatively quickly so I might once I've done this just give it a blast with the heat tool so that will probably be quite noisy then so that can go to dry pop this pigment ink back in and let's just put it on the floor right now so what's my piece of cardboard is drying and I'm just going to wipe my fingers a bit I don't like touching things with different colors on and stuff I need to have them more or less clean so I've got this let's just see how no it's still a bit tacky so let's get the heat tool out and you can see how the two uh, greens have blended quite well and it's just highlighted the rounder bits uh, and made them into a different color even though it was much much lighter uh, green that I had so just bear with me this is going to be a little bit noisy now
sorry that should hopefully be okay um, unfortunately I'm just doing this with a webcam so and it hasn't got a pause button so um, I'm really sorry I know you're not tuning in to watch me heat drying things so but let's just try this yeah that's okay now I'm going to get my bird stencil back because I was wanting some flying birds somewhere as well let's just do some here no let's um let's do the blending around the edges first i think now i'm going to do that with the um always artichoke just a little bit don't want too much to go in sorry that's my throat just being a little bit dry so this blending the edges should help me see if I wanted to add something else to the background <coughs> gosh I'm terribly sorry and I've run out of water as well to drink right <clears throat> so i'm just going to come slightly in where my leaves are to give it a bit more to give it a bit more dimension around there and maybe shadow them slightly So that's coming quite nicely together so let's see what the letters look like on the background right so I will have to doodle around them later on but that's not a big problem so let's just um, get the birds in I was going to put some in with using the um, the always artichoke ink which I'm just doing now right here we go that's them in and I'll do another I'll do another shadow somewhere at the top no what I'll do is with these here I'll just um, get the paste out or the filler more like and do them at the top there and uh, then I'll think I have to stop the video otherwise it's going to be too long because that will take a little while to dry so what I'll be doing is I might add some more um, background stamping or a little bit more other colouring or whatever before I put the um... oh gosh I'm I can't think now, blimey, before I put the letters on. So that's just something for you. Now I have to mask this off a bit more thoroughly. So I'm going to put that here because I want my birds to be relatively close to the edge. Yeah, that paste is not as... Um, 
the filler is not as liquid as my grunge paste was so I've got to be a little bit careful here how I do this but it will work and it shall work and there we go that's it so that's my spatula cleaned and this is going to come off as well and it's going straight into my bowl of water again right so that's that let's just manipulate the paste a little bit so that's it that can dry like this now and then um, I'll probably sand it slightly and give it a little bit of color and I'll add a, a couple of more bits to it and then this is going to be stuck onto my cardboard and it will form the front of the door sign. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching. And um, of course, the finished project will be on my blog, tinkercards.blogspot.co.uk and it will also be on the Stamplorations blog. That's stamplorations.blogspot.com. Okay, well, thanks for watching again and have a lovely day and I shall be back soon. Bye.